Hi, welcome to ADI Technical Training. I'm Matthew. Today I'm in the technical lab at our UK hub in Chatterton, Manchester. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to look at relays. What do they do and how do you use them? Relays are mainly used in our industry, in the security industry. They are mainly used in access control. Gone are the days on an alarm system, for instance, the, out, the output for the bell is um, normally closed, triggering the bell box or the SAB, the SCB. On um, CCTV, relays are used to activate red wall or voice challenge systems or automated messages, not used as much as it used to be for switching matrix um, paths and things like that. On the fire side, relays are still used heavily um, for interfacing between the fire system and maybe an access control door when you're going to tell a door to open. But predominantly, a relay would mainly be used in an access control, a separate standalone relay, sorry, would mainly be used as an interface on an access control system between, for example, in this video, between a intercom and a magnet. It's a very common integration in tech support. It's one we, every day, I, I expect. Somebody will say, I need to put a magnet on a intercom. The intercom is 12 volts AC. The mag lock is 12 volts DC. What do I have to do to make these two work? What part do I need? And that's what a relay is. It's the interface. It's a switch. It's a remote switch. Let's have a look at the terminals on a relay. On most of the relays we do at ADI Global, our relays are 12 to 24 volts AC or DC. You've got to ensure, though, it, when you get your relay, it's compatible with your intercom. So in most cases, is that relay 12 volts AC? Is it powered by 12 volts AC? When, when we say it's a 12 volt AC relay, that doesn't tell you what it can switch. It tells you what voltage it works on to command it to switch. So on the side there on the left hand side we have two terminals coil and because it's ac or dc it won't be polarized because ac there isn't really positive or negative so it would, it would just be coil one and coil two um, on the right hand side towards the middle you can see there we have a normally open at the top normally closed and common so if we start at the bottom you can see you have the terminal there common. That's a common circuit, the common input. If you see there and you follow the line at the bottom up and then you come to sort of, of, of a pivot, you can see it will make a short circuit between common and normally closed. That's because normally that circuit is closed. Now, if you have a look at C and normally open, C and NO, the circuit's open. You, you can't make a path through common to normally open. And to do that, you need the, re the relay to energize. So in its normal condition with no power going to the relay, normally closed makes a circuit, normally open is an open circuit. Let's look inside a uh, relay. Let's look at how the relay actually works. At the top, you can see we have a, a, an electronic symbol for a magnet, an electromagnet. Um, below that, you have the armature plate, and that's pivoted onto the contact we were talking about before, that between common and normally closed. So simply, when you apply power to that coil, it will energize the magnet, the electromagnet, the solenoid, and that will pull the plate up. And if you were to pull that plate up, you can see here in this example, if you pull that plate up, the normally closed circuit now becomes an open circuit, and the normally open circuit is now a closed circuit. And that's simply held in place for as long as you're applying power into the coil connection at the top there. As long as you're keeping power coming into that coil, that relay will stay in that condition. As soon as you remove power, you can see it goes back to its normal condition and the common can now go through the path to normally closed and make a circuit again on the normally closed circuit. And that's simply how a relay works and, and what its principle is. So if we consider a normal application of having an mag lock on a door, if you were to apply 12 volts DC power to that magnet constantly, so on your power supply negative to negative on the magnet, positive to positive on the magnet, if you were to apply those two 
connections into the magnet, it will constantly lock because that's what it is. It's an electromagnet. As long as you give it power, that magnet will stay locked. So the door will be constantly secure. So on a typical example on a door where you have an intercom, for example, how would the intercom tell the door to unlock? Let's look at this example here. We have a 12 volt AC intercom and we have a magnet. All magnets work on DC, by the way. We have a magnet here, which is 12 volts DC. What we need to do is cut the power to the magnet. So we can do that in, you know, you can just go to the power supply, flick the switch and turn it off. But if you were to cut the positive to this magnet, if you were to cut that positive there, the magnet would stop working and it would become an open circuit. But for magnet to work, it needs constant power. We need a closed circuit. So what we can do on the intercom is change um, change the intercom from having a lock release on it, and we would connect a relay there instead. And we want that relay to be a closed circuit to allow, allow power to go to the magnet constantly. So what we would do is use the terminals on the uh, relay common to feed and then back out of normally closed to the positive of the magnet. In doing that, we're creating a closed circuit. We're allowing positive to travel through the relay back into the uh, magnet, allowing the magnet to stay constantly locked. And there it is. For all its simplicity, that's what the relay will do. It's simply a switch. The switch is operated by the intercom. The intercom, if you see my other videos on the five wire intercoms, the intercom simply applies negative to the coil connection. Positive is already existing. That in turn energizes the relay. The relay, as you remember, has a pivot and that will cause the normally closed circuit to become normally open. Installers rely on ADI. The ADI projects and technical teams offer a pre-configuration service. Any project size from a single device or to a complex system. Any IP device can be configured from our central hub using our technical and projects teams. Having your device pre-configured will save engineers time on site. We can set your IP address, the gateways, and in addition, we'll make sure your device has the latest firmware on board. Simply get in touch with your ADI sales contact or email the projects team. Thanks very much for watching. All the products mentioned in this training video can be found on our website. Links are below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much.